we believe the the word of god has everything you need yeah. to do spiritual warfare hey everybody welcome to today's episode of conversations with john and lisa i'm always always delighted to sit next to you and hear the wisdom that comes out of your mouth babe uh, today, we're actually doing uh, the second part of a two-part series. I want to strongly encourage you, if you did not hear last episode, go back and listen to it first, because in the last episode, we shared with you how to identify when the enemy is attacking you. Yeah, to know and your enemy. this episode, we're really going to focus on how to, well... Attack back, I guess is a way of yeah, saying how it. How to engage in a way that engage. you win. Yeah, that yeah, you win. I absolutely. love that. That's much better put. So it's okay. uh, before we jump into it, let me say, please review, please rate, and please subscribe to the broadcast because this really helps people get the message. Uh, I guess, I, you know, that's a really good... We're I've showing been, our age, podcast. Podcast, to broadcast the podcast, podcast, I guess. All right. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, if you review the program, you might get your review read on air, just like iCallus24 did. And yeah. iCallus says this, thank you for letting us in uh, in on your years of wisdom, I feel like I'm sitting in your kitchen table. You are, <laughs> you are. <laughs> and uh, being encouraged in the things of God. I like that you are so practical and full of grace and truth, humor and humility. Gosh, what a beautiful thing she uh, he or she's saying. And I just love your relationship. What a blessing you are to the body of Christ. Keep up the good work. We just pray that God keeps us in that place where we can continue to help people, where we stay humble and strong in truth. And so today we now jump into what is so important, and that is we are seeing so much spiritual warfare escalate in our country, Lisa, around the world that that's why we're addressing this. Yeah, you know, John, when I wrote Without Rival, I talked about how we often talk about, oh, it's going to be an alien invasion and that's going to be the end of the world. <laughs> but I actually think, and, and maybe that will happen. Maybe Tom Cruise is right on that. Maybe Scientology. But actually, I think the problem isn't going to be an alien invasion, but widespread alienation where our culture is divided everybody sees one another as a target as a rival as an enemy we are depersonalizing people i've never seen people so uh, careless with the cruelty of their words yeah. and they think they're fighting people but we discovered in the last episode that we do not wrestle with flesh and blood but with principalities, powers, and rulers of wickedness in high places that have one goal, and that is to exalt themselves and keep us from the knowledge or the knowing of God. So they do it. We talked about in the last episode through strongholds in your thought. You know, I remember Jean Wilkerson. What a great, great woman of God. She was a mighty intercessor. She had a prayer meeting that met in her basement, a bunch of women once a week or twice a week. I can't remember what it was for 20 years. That all during the war. I remember her she saying, said yes, she God would lead them in intercession over the Vietnam War. And I remember one day she was sitting in the van. Now, this is back in the 19, early 1980s. She goes, we ran into world rulers when we were praying in our basement. I went, world rulers. And I remember, were her, Tulsa. I remember her, getting, her getting out of the van to the hotel because she was going to speak at our church. And I remember thinking about it that night. And I thought, what war divided the world more than any other war um, that in my days, my days, I'm not talking about World War One or two because I wasn't alive then. And that Vietnam War literally affected the entire world. That's when America's influence began to decline. That's when other things began to happen. It was a pivotal war that changed world events. And I thought, wow, that was what was behind that war when she said that. And you know, one of the reasons why the Americans didn't, they weren't victorious in that war was because it was guerrilla warfare and they didn't know, know their, their enemy. enemy. It was a constant battle between the seen and the unseen. They didn't know they their enemy's in, tactics. They didn't know their enemy's tactic. They didn't know their enemy's territory. They were in foreign land. And I think right now we, we're kind of living in that kind of realm where we get confused about what's really going going on. You know, I know that we said we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but we do wrestle. We do definitely have We're a battle out there. And so what are some ways to win, John? 
What are some ways to win? And these are some of the things that we're going to be unpacking today. And I think the first one is to surrender any area of your life that is not submitted to the cross and the obedience of Jesus Christ. Any unsubmitted areas. We found out those are the areas where the enemy can take and hold that territory. You know, I, I mentioned in the last episode about how I um, had this beautiful spiritual father who said, Lisa, it is a demonic force. And, and I said, but I'm staying in my parents' house. And I remember he said, go through the house. He said, just pray in the spirit, you know, be, have sensitivity to what's going on. My, my parents were separate at this time. My mom was not there. My brother was not there. And I walked slowly from room to room. Yeah. But I remember, John, that when my mom came home, I said, Mom, we are not wrestling. With, there's, a, there's a demonic attack going on right now. And, and she was like, I don't believe that. People make choices. And, and I remember the authority over the rest of the house, it, the, any authority I, I was trying to exercise was lost. But my room. I remember my he, my room became a haven became a because because I said I do believe this is demonic and I'm going to walk in obedience and I'm not going to attack people my mother my father whatever was going on this place is for the presence of God I sanctify this this square footage and it is holy under the Lord you know I look at uh, Peter what he writes he said they promise you liberty you think you're free but they actually become a slave to whom they obey. So rebellion is sometimes represented as freedom. Do you know that rebellion is the number one command in the Satanic Bible? There is a Satanic Bible. They call it that. It's not, it's, it's well, Bible means inspired writings, correct? Am I correct in that? <clears throat> so anyway, Watch whatever. Scripture, yeah. Anyway, the number one command is do what you will. Do what thou will. Because God said to Cain right from the beginning, because God had rejected Cain and his offering, Cain, his countenance had fallen. And God made the statement. He said, hey, if you obey me, won't you do well? Yeah. But if you refuse to obey me, sin is crouching at the door and its desire is for you. But you should rule over it. Yeah. So God tells right from the beginning how to rule over these demon spirits. Wow. It's number one, what you just stated, mm -hmm. obedience. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> that is is where it begins. And that's why the Bible says, submit yourself to God, which means submit to his authority, resist the devil and he'll flee from you. The way, the number one way we resist the devil is our submission to God. Yeah. I'm, I'm telling you, I remember the Lord showed me once because we understood back in our early days, how important words were. And the Lord one day showed me, he said, you can speak scriptures, my word, till you're blue in the face, but if you're not submitted to my lordship, if you're not submitted to my authority, the de enemy will laugh at you. Yeah. I mean, this was a real encounter I had with the Holy Spirit that shook me. You know, I realized, okay, John Bevere, um, you can be strong, you can be authoritative, and you say, quote that scripture and say, I command this to go, and the enemy will just laugh at you if you don't have a submitted heart to the authority of God. And the thing is, what is the enemy attacking right now in our day more than anything else is how corrupt. He's trying to put in people's minds, all authority is corrupt, all authority is evil, all authority is going to harm me, all authority is going to bind me up and, and constrict me. When in reality, authority is from God. And I just read it in Corinthians yesterday, 2 Corinthians, Paul said, all our authority is given to serve. Our authority is given to protect. God's authority is given to protect and serve. It's not given to enslave. Now, yes, authority has been abused. It has been abused and abused because the enemy delights in that. If he can, he if bends he, it. He yeah, twists. If he can things, bend he it and twist it, it yeah. and have 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 people that are in places of delegated authority that begin to misuse it and wield it to harm people. Now people want to reject all authority, including God's. Yeah. And now all of a sudden they think they're getting free. Oh, I'm free but they end up becoming slaves. That's exactly what Peter said. Yeah, I love that you brought up that authority is for direction, provision, and protection, that it is for our benefit. It is not, authority that's healthy does not exercise authority for its own sake. It exercises authority for the sake of uh, those, those under its leads. care. So I guess when we're talking first and foremost, what, what we should do is ask the Holy Spirit, 
Is there any area in your life that is not yet submitted to God? Because there's some people that, I mean, I know for me, John, there's areas where I'm like, I'm happy to surrender this area. Yeah. But I want to hold this one. Right. And, you know, I know when I got free from an eating disorder, it was an invitation of, can you trust me? Will you surrender this to me? And so there's areas that we freely surrender. And then there's areas that we are like, he has to pry it out of our hands. And I'm just going to challenge you. I know that we're doing a podcast right now, but I'm going to challenge you to get alone and say, God, is there any area in my life where I'm opening the door to the enemy because I refuse to submit it to your word? Okay. And how do we walk in light? If the enemy walks in darkness, how do we walk in light? Well, I see walking in the light is walking in the life of God, in the truth of God. And when we walk in the truth of God, we begin to think in line with God's thoughts. And then we begin to speak mm. God's thoughts. Now, this is the next two areas that we gain victory over the enemy is what we think. Okay. But can before we move on to that, I, I was thinking as you yep. were talking about the woman taken in adultery. And, you know, that's everybody's favorite to talk about, you know, uh, you are without sin, cast the first stone, yeah. and, and Jesus, I do not condemn you. But yeah. he also said, go and sin no more. And we put a little chapter break there, but he's, he goes on to say in that, in that encounter, I am the light of the world. He who walks with me has the light of life and no longer walks in darkness. So when we mm. have this incredible mercy and walk in the light of that mercy and do not return back to a life of sin, we walk in light. The other thing I was thinking about is when we were youth pastors, do you remember how one of our uh, fellow youth pastors got really engaged with studying about oh my all God. the demonic this stuff and, and all the principalities and all their names and all of their influences? He was and, reading which former witches yes, books yes, accounts. And, and he became enamored with it. And, yeah. And he, then he started actually having demonic things happen. Do you remember yes, that? He so, literally had uh, a, a demon, uh, uh, an uh, astral uh, projection. Uh, in uh, his yeah. House. A, 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 a witch or a witch or a warlock Something. did an astral projection yeah. right into his bedroom at night. Yeah. And we told him, we said, we need to be excellent of, at what is good and innocent of what is evil. We believe the the word of God has everything you need yeah. to do spiritual warfare. So can I, can I kind of give the yeah. backstory of that? Yeah, absolutely. So he was my assistant youth pastor yes. and he's still to this day. I have so much Beautiful respect man. for this man. Yes. Beautiful man. Um, but I remember when I saw him, he was becoming enamored. He was like, well, yeah. we got to know the chance these, these, these warlocks and witches are saying, so we know how to battle it. And I said, no, 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 no. And I gave him an example. I said, do you know that scientists did a study and what they did is they put a Python into I was just say that one. Derek Prince is they, they put it, they put a Python yep. in a cage and they put a little, uh, a bird, a, it was a, a, bird. a finch. It was a finch and the finch was freaking out. Yeah. Terrifying so they had a snake. little, they had, they had branches in it and the, and the bird was up in the corner of the cage, just freaking out. And the snake's just sitting there looking at the bird just and didn't move. Okay. So the bird starts getting a little closer and a little closer and the bird staring at the snake. The bird comes down on the ground and is walking around staring at the snake. And then the bird gets in front of the snake. The snake opens its mouth and the bird jumps into its mouth and he eats it. It closes and eats yeah, it. Yeah. Now it's a seduction power of evil. So yes, yes, evil is seductive. So when you start focusing on that, see the Bible doesn't say keeping our eyes fixed on demonic powers. It says keeping our eyes fixed on Jesus. So the way I love to say this is yeah. you keep your focus on Jesus. And if Satan gets in the way, the demons get in the way, blast them and keep your eyes back on Jesus. Right. Okay. And how do you blast them? You blast them by speaking the word of God. That's the, what Jesus did. It he said is it written. is written. Yes. Right. So good. And if that's the way Jesus had to do it as God manifests in the flesh, walking as the son of man. That's the way we've got to do it. And I noticed, Lisa, so many people don't speak to demonic forces in the name of Jesus. What well, they do is they say, yeah. like what your mother said, well, people, I have choices. Well, this, well, what's unfortunately you're doing is you've reduced it back down to flesh and blood mm -hmm. instead of realizing, okay, I, I can get out of this conversation and go in my prayer closet. And I'm going to take care of this thing in the spirit. I remember we used to have like really, really big marriage fights, right? When yes. we were first married. Yes. And I remember the more I fought, the worse it got and the harder the feelings were. But then I remember a couple of times I, I got a little smart 
And I said, I'm going out tomorrow morning and dealing with this in, in prayer. And I, I'd go out and I'd take authority over it. And I'd come back in. It was like a different atmosphere in our house. Yep. And yep. another way that you and I had to battle, God says he gives us the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. And if you read Psalm 149 and yep. 150, you'll find out that praise is actually a weapon, not yep. worship. Yep. Praise is actually a weapon that will bind up the fetters. And I remember one time, you know, I was just under this heaviness and you were at the grocery store and I was like, so I put on this worship set. I was set. always dancing. You were. And I dancing. learned this from you. But I remember this became real to me. It was heavy in my house. We were kind of at each other's You danced at throats. Celebrate Jesus, Celebrate. I remember that? Yes, I, I totally like, remember. It was like, I can't remember. It was one of the integrity early that was, ones. No, it was, it was Celebrate it Jesus, It was the 1995 celebrate. or something like that. And I put on that worship set, and it was like 10 minutes, and, and I was dancing. Yeah, I felt really? like I was dancing in liquid lead, and I was like, Ugh. and I remember the Holy Spirit saying, rewind it and start again, because that was cassette tape days. So yep. I rewound it, yep. and I started again. And the second time, I had a glimpse of Jesus on the phone, and I started going crazy crazy. I'm running through our house. Now you got a, a little tiny house and I'm running through the house. I'm like, yes, I'm jumping up and down. I mean, my, I'm jumping so high. My head is probably coming like a foot or two away from the ceiling. And I remember you walked in, you said, what happened here? Yeah. The whole atmosphere is yep. different, Yep. you know, and it's, 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 it's the spiritual forces. Mm -hmm. And if we don't address them spiritually, you cannot address spiritual forces with natural weapons. You have to do it with spiritual weapons. Yep, yep. Well, and, um, you know, another thing, talking about sw switching an atmosphere, you know, when you have, uh, it's going back to us fighting, when we confessed our sins, healing happens. Yeah. So so when you say, all right, and, and I want to be really clear with something. A lot of times people apologize instead of confessing. Apologies, if you look at apologetics, that is the argument in defense of something. So when you're married to your spouse and you say, I'm really sorry I yelled at you, but you make me so mad when you do this, that's actually you arguing. That's an apology, but you're really saying, I'm sorry, but you made me. But a confession sounds like, I'm sorry I was wrong. I should never have done this. And you don't you don't wait that to do that depend on now what are you going to say you just own your portion and something that god taught me a long time ago that when you own your sins and your mistakes they no longer own you we are not perfect people but we are not allowed to make excuses. We need to be people who confess and say god your word says this my 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 behavior was that i am sorry and he's like right away, first of all, it's not when he finds out about it, but he's right away. And then he usually says, now go to John. Go so, to John. What you did with me, bring it to John so that healing can happen. Yes, absolutely. So let's review. Yeah. Okay. Number wow, there's one. There's so many things we didn't get through. I know. Oh my gosh. Number one, it is so important that we stay humble and that we obey God. Mm -hmm. That's the first level of spiritual warfare. Mm -hmm. That's the foundation for spiritual law. Humility, which means your utter dependence on God. Yes. You seeing yourself below others. And secondly is, I just said it, oh, obedience, our obedience to God. You got it, babe. Then third, okay, so one, humili humility, obedience. Third is the way we think. This is why Paul commands us, whatever things are pure, just, honest, good report, think on these things. That's why Paul says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. You get to choose what you think. Right. They're mighty in God to pulling down strongholds, mm -hmm. casting all imagination. Every high thing exalts, exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing every thought captive to the every obedience thought. of Christ. Yep. Then third is the power of speaking. Jesus had to speak to the yeah. enemy. It yeah. is written. If you look at Proverbs, death and life are in the power of the tongue. Jesus said to the disciples, if you say, speak, say to the mountain, the apostle said, Lord, increase our faith. If you have faith as a seed, you will say to the small bear tree, be plucked up. You have to speak to the problem. Yeah. And if people are like, no, that's a that's a weird word of faith thing. Well, let me just talk about this. We have the ability to 
confess our sins, that's saying it out loud. So if we can confess sins, we can confess redemption, righteousness. And I think too many times people refuse to actually say things out loud. It brings salvation. That's how we got born again. We we confess you, you, Jesus You know what's Lord. really, really sad, I just realized? You just said some people think that's a weird word of faith thing. Isn't it sad that there were people that perverted the word of faith because yeah. Paul calls the entire gospel the word of faith, the word of faith which we preach? Yeah. And it's so sad that we, when we you need say to bring that, it back in a need, healthy way. it's kind of like, you know how words get perverted yeah. down through time? Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, that's a word I think should be restored. But unfortunately, with people, they go to the negative when they hear it instead of realizing that's what the whole gospel, the whole, all of the epistles are called the word of faith, which we preach. And without faith, it's impossible to please God. Yep. But listen, we've come to a close here. I hope this has helped you. I, I just want to encourage everybody. Yeah. I think these are two podcasts you should go back over and over again because we are in the midst of a massive battle. And I believe that you are called by God. I don't believe this. I know this. you are called by God to You're be victorious, right yeah. to be an overcomer in this time of warfare and to see great victories yeah. on behalf of, you know, the people you love for the glory of God. And so we want to thank you for tuning in. And we want to encourage you again, please rate, review, or and even subscribe. Also, we remind you about Messenger X. Just go to the App Store, type in Messenger X. And John, I no feel like between the R and, the X. and Girls with Swords are incredible resources. resources. And they're that, on Messenger that, X, yeah, right? Our Messenger X that would really dive deep into this because I feel like we just barely hit the surface on some of this. Yeah, Relentless, the entire book is on spiritual warfare. Mm -hmm. And that book is actually free. It's no charge on Messenger X. So go to the App Store, type in Messenger X, no space between the R and the X, Go to Google Play if you have an Android and enjoy. And it, it, I think Girls with Swords, the audiobook is free. Yeah. So, yeah. Yep, so you're long. you're set. I mean, we've got two full resources on there for you yep. just as a gift. God put it in our heart to give it to you because we want to see the body of Christ strengthened. Until next time, this has been Conversations with John and Lisa. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Conversations with John and Lisa Bevere. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe and rate this podcast wherever you love to listen. Also, if you haven't already, go right ahead and download Messenger X to hear more content from John and Lisa Bevere and other great messengers. Again, thank you so much for joining us and we'll see you next time on Conversations with John and Lisa.